What it do, Rap Squad? It's DJ Scanless. We bringing you another hip hop video. For this one, I'm gonna break down another Fat Joe podcast. He recently had on Faith Evans, the wife of the Notorious B.I.G., and they talk about the infamous photo between Faith Evans and Tupac Shakur. Let's get it. All right, so we on this website, cheatsheet.com. Title reads: Faith Evans speaks on infamous Tupac Shakur photo. It was a chance meeting. Before the East Coast rap war, Tupac and Biggie formed a friendship in the early 90s. By 1993, Tupac already dropped his debut album, Tupac List Now, and followed that up with his sophomore release. Brooklyn bred Biggie was still an upcoming rapper when he first linked up with Tupac. According to Vice, they hit it off after Pac invited Biggie to a house party. Through 1993 and most of 1994, the two were friends and respected each other as artists. That changed after Tupac Shakur was shot in the lobby of a New York recording studio, Quad Studio. He thought Sean Puff Daddy Combs, also known as Diddy, and the Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls, whom were upstairs in the recording studio, were either directly or indirectly involved or responsible for that shooting. The day after Tupac Shakur was shot, he was tried and convicted in a sexual assault case, which was sexual abuse, and sentenced to prison. This is when ill feelings started brewing between Biggie and the rivalry ensued. Faith Evans and Biggie married in August 1994, a few months before Tupac was shot. Sometime after Tupac's release in 1995, Tupac and Faith Evans were photographed together while out. Tensions were building up between the coast after Suge Knight dissed Puff Daddy at the 1995 Source Awards. Things got worse when Suge Knight insinuated that Tupac slept with Faith Evans in a New York Times Magazine interview. And later, Tupac himself dropped some lines in a 1996 diss track, Hit Him Up, to co-sign that claim. Publicly, Biggie said that he didn't believe Tupac's story, but their friendship had crumbled by 1996. During an appearance on Fat Joe's Instagram Live show, Faith Evans spoke about the picture and the beef it caused. And here's a brief clip here. That one photo with Tupac, the one photo, you and Tupac, and mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the whole entire shit. When I see it, I'm just like, what the fuck is this, right? And what was that about? That Like, w w was the beef on already, or, or that was before the beef? When I met Tupac, I was actually in LA um, trying to get work as a writer. I was out here writing with a producer and his new group and, you know, kind of staying with them in their apartment. And we just happened to go out that night to the Hollywood Athletic Club. This, it, this was like between my first and second album. And I remember this was shortly after I was told that Mary wanted her voice off of my record, which the, we did that song together on my first album. So I was just, I was confused. I didn't, it was a lot that I didn't really know as far as the dynamics with why that happened. At that time, I do recall, um, you know, and Big and I were, you know, not, not in the greatest place, but I recall him kind of, they used to get like crank calls and people hanging up and stuff like that. But you gotta, you know, you know, back then it wasn't like now, everything wasn't real time. So it wasn't like if that happened, it might take a month for you to see somebody say something in a magazine or they may not go on the radio in your city right away. You know what I'm saying? So it took a minute for things to make their rounds to kind of seem a little more believable or accurate or, you know, or, or you got to hear from that the person themselves said it than today. So, yeah, there were mumblings of things, but I was out here trying to do something opposite of kind of bad boy you know i was trying to not be around big because he was on some bullshit but at the same time i was out here to make money as a writer and that had nothing to do with tupac whatsoever that was really just a chance meeting at a club actually tretch who i knew already was with him that night and that's who actually came and made the introduction so yeah but but you do know let's call that a picture gone bad like, mm -hmm. like I've been in a picture gone bad. Tupac, rest in peace, turned that picture into the first line of the diss record. Well, listen, I just recently found out from doing a project for TV that the photographer who took that picture was paid to make sure he got a picture. I just found this out 20 some years later on everything. Like they, they said, the guy said he's had to live with that forever because once they found out I was there, he was told instructed to make sure he got a photograph but i probably would have taken the picture anyway i called big right away i was like i'm not your friend you know big really thought felt like that's his homie so i didn't feel like 
it was like I'm like I met your friend Tupac. I didn't think really anything of it like that. So from her standpoint, she basically says that she went out to LA for a business opportunity. To me, I don't really believe that side of the story. I don't want to take shots at Bad Boy or at anybody, but that story to me does not add up because Faith Evans was already working with Bad Boy Records, already had music out, was already on Notorious B.I.G. songs. What other opportunity did she have on the table that resided out in Los Angeles that she needed to get to when she had everything and anything that she could possibly do or get in New York City? If she wouldn't link up with any other artist, Diddy could have handled that. So I don't really understand why she had to go out to L.A. or even make this claim that she had to go out to L.A. for a business opportunity because any type of business, Diddy could have got for her or Biggie could have got for her. So what's actually claimed with this whole thing is that Faith Evans actually hooked up with Tupac Shakur. And this is what gave Tupac the ammunition to drop hit him up. You know, in the opening lines, he says, and I fucked your wife and also I fucked your bitch. Now them hooking up, it all stemmed from Faith Evans going out to L.A., getting involved with Tupac and actually recording another song with Tupac Shakur. So apparently Tupac Shakur told Faith Evans that they were going to record music together and she was going to be paid $25,000. I'm not too sure if this is correct or not, or the real truth, because, you know, Faith Evans could be spinning this around into her favor and making Pac look bad. Now, the song that we know about that, that Faith Evans actually recorded with Tupac Shakur was the song, Wonder Why They Call You Bitch. Now, on the album version, her chorus is actually removed and replaced by another singer. The original version was actually a song that Tupac recorded in around 94, 93, for his follow-up album for Me Against the World that would have been released through Interscope Records called Are You Still Down? Not to be confused with the 97 version. This version did not feature Faith Evans. However, when Tupac Shakur went to prison and he came back out, he actually remade the song again with Johnny J as the producer and Faith Evans on the chorus. And then later on for the album, they actually removed her. So the Faith Evans version is still unreleased, but you can find it on YouTube. Now here's where the story gets, you know, kind of crazy. So in 2014, Faith Evans claimed that Tupac asked for oral SEX. She told Vlad TV that she went to Pac's hotel room after they recorded a song, Wonder Why I Call You Bitch, in order to collect that $25,000 that he owed her for a contribution on that track. It was there that Faith Evans claimed that Tupac Shakur asked her to perform those sexual actions on himself. She went on to say, he asked in a very surprising and offensive way for sure. By that time, it was very clear to me. It seemed to me that it was kind of like a plan, she explained. In an interview with Art of Dialogue, Tupac's girlfriend Desiree Smith agreed that Faith Evans was a part of the revenge plan that Tupac had against Biggie. Desiree Smith went on to say that Tupac told her that he recorded music with Evans and then slept with her. Speaking of Art of Dialogue, let's check out my homeboy's Instagram channel here. You can find him on YouTube at the Art of Dialogue and on Instagram. If you're a Pac fan, you'll love his Instagram. He always posts a lot of interviews involving Tupac, a lot of news as well. Now, our dialogue went on to say Faith Evans claimed that she had no idea that Tupac wasn't rocking with Biggie Smalls when she took that picture with Tupac in L.A. at the Athletic Club. She claims that she didn't know what Tupac said in the Vibe magazine about Biggie Smalls because it took time for word to get around because it was said in the magazine, even though the interview Tupac did with Kevin Powell for Vibe magazine was released in April of 1995 six months prior to Tupac being released from prison. So how she didn't know? Faith Evans just needs to admit that she went to LA to let Tupac take her to Pound Town because she was mad that Biggie Smalls was cheating on her. And I find this to be very true because Biggie wasn't an angel, you know. Biggie was getting around doing his thing. He was getting at Lil' Kim. And who knows how many other groupies and all sorts of women he had around him. So it wouldn't be surprising to me that Faith Evans knew about all this and she wanted her own revenge on Biggie. Come on, Faith. Why are you always lying? That whole interview was out for almost half a year. And you're telling me you didn't know that Tupac and Biggie had beef? And let's be real. If Biggie didn't want no beef, you know, Biggie should have visited Pac in the hospital or visited Pac in prison. But he failed to do both of those things. And then he also took shots at Pac on so many other songs and subliminal disses. So people need to stop acting like all this shit was unwarranted and unjust. Because I think Pac had a lot of merit with this shit because, you know, he got shot. His homeboys are up in the studio. Nobody could tell him what happened. And then nobody visits him in prison or in the hospital. Something's got to be up. But that's just my opinion. But for Faith not to know that any of this happened, either she's naive or she's lying. Now let's check out some of the comments. 
Belly Bell says she's going to her grave with that lie. It's no way that she would ever meant that she let Pac clap her cheeks to her kids. God damn. <laughs> we got Reem CMG. Faith, let it go. You getting that Machiavelli karma. It's been over 20 years. It's time to own up and move on. Spencer does this says, since Biggie passed, Faith Evans been with Jada Kiss, Biggie's friend, and now is married to Stevie J, one of Biggie's producers. But you turn down Pac? Right. We got S Banda 888. She's never going to admit it because she feels some type of way about it. She could just admit that she was vengeful towards Puff and Big before playing with their money and holding out during the Bad Boy tour. Add that with the fact that B.I.G. was going out and messing with other women, she had more than enough. She walked off tour and went to L.A. knowing that she could make her own money and fuck with Tupac at the height of the beef. And it's also been confirmed by Tupac's former bodyguard, Frank Alexander, that Tupac smashed that. But yet, you know, we still going ring around the rosy with this shit, doing this whole circus shit, you know, lying about this. But I totally understand if Faith Evans feels like her actions played some type of part and the whole beef getting out of hand, then I can totally understand why she doesn't want to bring up all this shit and open old wounds. Because even though Pac and Biggie haven't been around for over 20 years, they're still more relevant than they ever been, especially Pac. You know, Pac is always in the news. Pox always talk about on every podcast. His music still blowing up on the charts at the height of this pandemic and these riots going on. You know, Tupac and Biggie are still hot topics. So I totally get that if she feels like she attributed to what actually transpired. So I do feel like she does have some type of remorse, but we all know what went down. You know, she just needs to face the facts and just, you know, be straight up. Now, let's be real here. Hit him up wouldn't have been as good or been highly as revered as a classic diss song if it did not include those shots about Faith. And also, Biggie was taking mad shots at Pac, just not in a straightforward manner. Yet songs like The Ugliest, which Biggie recorded with Busta Rhymes in 95, dissing Pac. You also had the song Brooklyn's Finest with Biggie and Jay-Z, where Biggie actually references the whole situation, where he claims that if Faith had twins, there'll be two Pacs. So a little history about the song hit him up. I know it's kind of off topic. But like I said, I don't think it'll be such a hot song if those lines were not in there. But the actual original version is still unreleased, features a whole different Pac verse. And this song was actually recorded around the same time that Wonder Why They Call You Bitch was actually recorded for the All Eyes On Me album. The hit em up that you guys all know was actually recorded months after the All Eyes On Me album even dropped. So the original version was actually recorded months earlier. And he does take a shot at Biggie claiming that he slept with Faith Evans also on that track. But to me, when you listen to it right here, you'll see this part, you know, it's just in there. The lines doesn't like just come right at you like the retail version. The retail version, Tupac says it twice. He got with your wife and his vocal tone, as well as his delivery, I think makes it more impactful on the actual retail version, as opposed to the original, where it just seems like the lines just placed in there. Now to me, it's not known why Tupac didn't release the original version on the All Eyes On Me album. You know, it's kind of believed that Suge heard it and he told Pac that he needs to go harder on the track, go harder at Biggie. And this is how the whole retail version actually came about. Don't worry, guys. I'll break down more of this hit em up original version in a later video. Anyways, guys, drop your comments below. Let me know how you feel about this. Do you feel like they hooked up? Do you feel like Faith Evans is lying? And whether or not Tubac was demanding shit from her and she turned him down and got up the hell out of there? I don't believe that shit. But do you? Let me know. Like I said, shout out to Art of Dialogue. Shout out to Machiavelli Media. Shout out to everyone else that's holding down Pac. And his legacy on here on YouTube and every other platform. It's much appreciated. All right, you know what time it is. It's your boy DJ Scandalous, your favorite DJ's favorite DJ. And I'll catch all you busters on the flip side. We out. Deuces. <laughs>